Hello friends, uh, welcome back. So till now we have discussed about uh, different methods to analyze the system in time domain and frequency domain using tensor function and that is the basic representation we are using till now. So now we are moving towards a new uh, topic that is state space analysis. Okay, so uh, the basic use of state space analysis is to uh, represent the system with modern control algorithm or we can say it is a modern approach to mathematically model this system okay so uh, what are the state space models basically state space control is the often referred as a modern control method because it takes the different equation that describe the time domain of the system and analyze them in vector form using state variables this is in contrast to the classical control methods such as transfer function which rely on complex laplace transforms so he uh, you may not be understanding this uh, description straight away because uh, still till we are not familiar with the state space approach but uh, in short I would like to tell you that state space is a method which which referred to as a modern control representation whereas this uh, transfer function is the traditional control we can say control conventional control method so there are various limitations of transfer function which we are uh, defining in initial phase and then we are deriving the uh, its uh, representation of any system using transfer function method. So if we discuss about the limitations of transfer function, so there are various limitations. Let's start with the definition that uh, we, uh, as per our basic knowledge, we know that transfer function is nothing uh, but like uh, for any linear time invariant system, Laplace of output by Laplace of input at zero initial condition. Now in the definition itself, there are two limitations. First of all, it can be applied to linear time invariant systems only. And in the physical world, all system will not be satisfying this condition. So transfer function will not be applicable to nonlinear system or say time variant systems. As well as we also consider zero initial condition. So we already are familiar with the basic uh, electrical components like transistor, uh, transistor or say uh, if we start with the RLC circuit and inductor capacitor. So they store the energy. Uh, in different forms say for example inductor is storing energy in the form of current and capacitor is storing energy in the form of say voltage because we are familiar with the equation that energy stored across inductor is half li square same way in the capacitor is half cv square so they are the energy storing elements and when we derive the transfer function for uh, the circuit which is made up of this kind of components then we neglect the initial condition so our representation with the help of transfer function of that system will not be accurate because we are neglecting the initial condition so we are only applying transfer function method for zero initial condition and that is one of the limitation along with the uh, it, it can be applied to only linear time invariant system okay now transfer function uh, we are only interested in the lap, laplace of output by laplace of input so means we are only dealing in relation of output and input we are not bothered what are the internal states variation or what are the internal uh, changes happening in the system so we are not getting the detail inside of the system so this is also one of the limitation along with that we also said that transfer function can be applied to only single input single output system we cannot apply for MIMO system multi input multi output system it is comparatively difficult to perform transfer function analysis on a computer because it is a set of equations which is not that easy to write in a computer algorithm. So if we move to the modern control, these all are the uh, limitations of transfer function method and we consider it as a conventional control method. And we are now moving towards a new method that is state, state variable analysis method. So what are the advantages of state variable analysis method that can be applied to any type of a system, a non-linear system or say time invariant system, then also you can apply a state variable analysis method. It can be applied to MIMO system as well. So the limitation of transfer function was it can be applied to only CISO system. And we cannot do uh, modeling for MIMO systems. But here also we can use state variable method for analysis of the MIMO system. Now it gives idea about the internal state of the system. So as we go in uh, further discussion, you will be able to understand that uh, we are also understanding internal states of the system. So you can also 
identify what are the state changes happening in the process and that you can also analyze when you use a state, state variable analysis method. And apart from that, here we represent the system with the help of matrix. So those matrix representation will be helpful in computer algorithms. So when you want to develop uh, some kind of analysis using computer uh, uh, in computer environment, algorithm development, it will be easier in a state, state variable method. So these are the advantages because of which we are switching towards state space analysis than our conventional control strategy that is transfer function method. Okay. Now, uh, as I said earlier, we are dealing with MIMO system as well in the state, uh, state variable method. So uh, this is just a system in which I have multiple inputs, say U1, U2 up to UM. We represent U for input in state variable. It is generalized uh, representation. And after that, uh, with this input, if I'm getting the response as Y1, Y2 up to YP, so I'm getting P number of outputs and I represent output with the help of Y. And in between states are X1, X2 up to Xn. These are my N state variables. What are state variables that we will discuss in the further slide. But this is the representation uh, for MIMO system. I have M inputs, U1, U2 up to UM, P outputs, Y1, Y2 up to YP. And I have n number of state variables that are those are x1, x2 up to xn. Okay. Now what is state? The state of a system is the minimum set of variables. They are also known as state variables. Whose knowledge at t equals to t0 along with the knowledge of input at time t greater than equals to t0. We can completely describe the behavior of the dynamic system for t greater than t0. So this definition is... Uh, very easy if you understand its uh, basic idea what it is saying that if I have knowledge of the state variable at initial time t equals to t0 right and if I have knowledge of input for any future state for example I am giving uh, for example I have known states at t equals to 0 and after 2-3 seconds I apply some input in the system then I will be able to predict the output of the system how the system will behave those minimum set of variables are called as a state variables. We define state variables in the system. It depends on the type of the system as well. For electrical system, we, uh, we select the state variables in different way. For mechanical system, we select the state variables in different way. Uh, those things also I will cover in another session. But this is the basic idea. What what are states? And state variable is a set of state uh, set of variables which fully describe a dynamic of the system at given instant of time so they will be able to uh, give you some insight of system dynamics so those are my state variables okay now we represent the system in the form of this equation in state space that x dot is equals to a x of t plus b u of t y is equals to c x of t plus d u of t you already have discussed that u stands for uh, input so here you will be a vector because these are uh, this will be a representation in terms of uh, vectors so we will be representing uh, we will be understanding u as an input vector y as an output vector x x is basically a vector of all state variables it will be as we know that there are n number of state variables so x1 x2 up to xn will be a, a state vector and x dot is nothing but derivative of this state vector. So x dot is ax of t plus bu of t in which x of t is my state vector, u of t is my input vector and x dot is the time derivative of the state vector. Similarly, in the equation y is equals to cx plus du, uh, x of t is my state vector, u of t is my input vector and y is my output vector. What are matrix? This ABCD are the matrix and that we will discuss in this part. Basically, what we are doing is we are drawing, uh, uh, we want to understand the state space block diagram. So in that, what I have done is I have just, uh, I have tried to represent in the form of block diagram. This is a general description. So here what I am doing is I am having a system input u of t and this is my system output y of t. And this is basically a MIMO system. So I have drawn all the arrows with a thick line. So at the this is basically one bias. S inverse stands for one bias. So one bias is nothing but integrator. So in Laplace integration will be represented with the help of one bias. So x dot is the 
state vector derivative it is time derivative of state vector so if i do integration of x dot my output will be x so x dot integration will be x okay what is my equation of state vector uh, time derivative of state vector x dot is equals to ax of t plus bu of t so if you see here this is my matrix a in which the input is x so this will be ax and at the input side i have matrix b so this is b into u so here the resultant output x dot will be a into x of t plus b into u of t so this is my first equation x dot is equals to ax of t plus b u of t i am getting uh, the idea from block diagram similarly if you see the output equation it is y of t so what is y of t from the block diagram i can say y of t is equals to c into x of t plus d into u of t so that equation also you can see here y is equals to c into x of t plus d into u of t okay now what are this matrix that we will discuss so first of all what is matrix a matrix a is known as system matrix uh, or we can say state matrix right its uh, dimension is always it is a square matrix so its dimension is n cross n n stands for number of state variables b is my input matrix so input matrix we represent with the help of uh, uh, with the with the help of this block in this block diagram so what is the dimension of input matrix dimension of input matrix is n cross n number of state variables into number of inputs c is my output matrix okay dimension of output matrix is p cross n number of outputs into number of state variables okay d stands for you can see in the block diagram it is directly transmitting input to output so it is called as a direct transmission matrix and uh, it is also called as a feed forward matrix right so it is directly feeding input to output so it is also called as a feed forward matrix dimension of d matrix is p cross m this dimensions are very important because when we will discuss uh, the state stress representation each and every matrix uh, uh, knowledge as well as dimension you should be clear so that you will be able to convert any physical system in some sort of a state variable representation so till now i have just given you basic insight how we represent this uh, system in the state space representation as well as why we are using state space method because till now we were dealing with the trans function method and we have seen that there are many limitations of trans function method or say classical control strategy or say conventional control strategy instead of that if we switch on the state space method for uh, mathematical modeling of the system it will be very easy and there are many benefits which you have gone through so that is why we are switching from trans function method to state space method and this is just a introductory uh, session on state space representation in upcoming session we will also discuss on uh, how to convert the given electrical system in state space representation or some mechanical system in state space representation as well as we will also have some insight how we have derived this equation that x dot is ax plus bu and y is equals to cx plus du but uh, from block diagram that representation i have tried to explain you and the dimension and all those things should be straight away clear because uh, if you see that matrix a b c and d all the matrix are given names based on their position for example b is input matrix because it is connected to the input side side c is output matrix because it is connected to the output side right uh, d is directly transmitting input to output so it is direct transmission matrix or we can say feed forward matrix and a is connected in the initial internal part of the system so it is called as a system matrix so in this way we represent the system in state space okay so thank you uh, for uh, going through the detailed description description of state space now we will have some quiz uh, part so i am giving you uh, some dimensions of matrix uh, some dimensions of input and output and you have to uh, just write in command that uh, what are the dimensions of matrix a b c d based on the dimension uh, dimension column which we have discussed in this uh, in this session so i am giving you there are three inputs in the system so i have u1 u2 up to u3 there are two outputs y1 y2 are the outputs of the system 
and I am having four states in the system x1, x2 up to x4. So you just have to comment in the uh, section that what will be the dimension of matrix A, B, C and D based on the given specifications. Okay, so let's connect uh, in the next session with more discussion. Until now, uh, goodbye from